Homestead. I'm Becky. Today's show is going to be about a little bird feeding station, putting a big draft horse in some stocks and putting pulling shoes for competition on them. Also, I want you to notice the beautiful tobacco barns that have been converted into the stables. That will take place in Kentucky. And then I will be reading a few letters from my viewers. So let's go and look at the bird station. Having a bird station on the homestead is a really enjoyable way to attract the birds. When you're sitting on the patio, you can enjoy the different variety of birds in your neighborhood. Here is a nice example of a bird station. If you like to attract birds on your homestead, this is a really good example of what you can build. It's very simple. It's three four by fours, eight feet long, and then the top one bolted in. What's nice about this is the birds land on the top of this and hop back and forth, and you can attract lots of birds at once. The different kinds of bird feed that are being fed here are suet, thistle, cracked corn, sunflower seed, and then wild bird seed. And that attracts, of course, almost every bird there is in the area here. This is a large metal bird feeder and you fill it from the top. There's a little thing back here you pinch and then you just raise the lid which makes it really easy to feed. I really like this feeder. This is a little plastic feeder and it looks like several birds can land on it at once and it would hold the little tiny seed because the holes are really small. And this one looks like a well-worn old bird feeder but it's still perfectly good. You fill this one through the top and what's nice about this one is it has the glass so you can see when it needs more seed. And then up here is the suet. It's just a little suet cage and the woodpeckers land on that and peck it. So if you like to attract the birds, this is a really good design you can try. Wasn't that a nice idea? I just think that works out so nice and attracted such a variety. It was very enjoyable to sit and watch the birds. Okay, off we go to the converted tobacco barns to look at the draft horses, get their competition shoes applied. That is a really nice trip, so let's get started. Oh my gosh, you put My mom and dad decided they were going to try racing horses when I was 10. Uh huh. So. Now, how old is this? A yearling? She's a wing. She's a weanling. She will be technically a year year old in January. Right. All, all her, but she'll be a yearling in January. And how old are they when you wean them? How? What age do you like to wean? I like to wean them when they're six months. Yeah, I like six months too. Five or six months. Some people on the mare. do the five. Some people do well, the four. Well, I do it depending on the mare. If the How mare's if the mare's getting too thin, yeah, time for the baby to go. Right. I'm here at Full Circle Farm in Kentucky with Denise, who breeds and raises thoroughbreds to sell. She makes her living doing this, and then her hobby is with the big heavy draft pullers. How long does a horse carry a baby? About 11 months. 11 months and 10 days is technically what they say. Uh, we try to breed them once a year, uh, mm -hmm. usually a month after they've had their full. Oh, they uh, breed right back a month after yeah, they've yeah. delivered a baby. Yeah. Oh, and, interesting. Um, well, in the thoroughbred world, the earlier the baby, the better, because they alternate year old right. on January 1st. So if one's born in May, he's technically only six months old. Right. So according to everybody else, he's a, he's a year old. So he's behind, basically. So he's behind. So you I want January, a lot of people want January and February foals. So that's what they're shooting so for. that's what they're shooting for I so see. you try to breed them as quickly after they've had one mm -hmm. to, to reach get, that to, well try to keep 
early falls. Right, that makes sense. Um, the bloodlines can actually make or break you. I mean, you may have oh. the best looking horse standing wow. here in front of you, and if it's not by something that people like, or if it's by something that people just absolutely don't like. So, so are like, they going more off the paper or more off the look of the horse? Um, it's kind of varied. There's been years where it was like all pedigree. Wow. And you know, you could have a horse that looked like nothing, but they had the pedigree itself. and they bought. And then there's been wow. years where they kind of switched where it was more just the horse itself. And they're kind of coming back to a medium now where it's 50, more. 50. Yeah, you know, the horse has got to Well, the horse has got to have the look, but then especially if you're buying fillies, right. then you could, they're looking for residual value. Right, right. As possibly broodmare. So you, then she's got to have a little better pedigree because you want to say, well, is she worth breeding when she gets done running? So not only will they race this mare on the track, when she's done racing on the track, then they will breed her to have the babies for right. the next generation. For the next, right. Yeah, and when we get done taking care of all these mares and babies, we have our hobby as uh, Belgians, pulling horses. Oh, and I think Dave is putting some shoes on, so let's head over there and have a look at that. I got three legged horses. horse. So. I saw one black one that was actually pretty short. Denise's husband and he is here working on a heavy horse. How many horses do you keep here on the farm, the heavy drafts? Oh, 11, usually 10 or 11. We, I mean, if we could afford to keep them, we'd have 25 or 30, but uh, <laughs> we try to pull in competitions with ours so they're not, uh, they're not just staying out in the field. We don't do any farm work. We got a 7 8 mile racetrack and I will drag the track with a chain iron to level it. But that's all the all the farm work that we do. We strictly pull them for competition horses. Oh wow, that's exciting! And how many shows do you go to per year? Well, in the last in 2007 and 2008, we made 65 shows. So that's a lot of showing. Now I have to let Dave explain how much the weight these big horses can pull because it is so much. I didn't even believe it when they told me. So can you describe like a horse this size up here? How much they pull in a competition? Well, a pair that's ready to pull and they've been trained and, and everything done, uh, they'll pull two and a half to three times their body weight. So if they weigh 4,000 pounds at a good competition, we pull 27 foot and six inches on sled pulls most of the time. They ought to be able to pull, you know, 10,500 to 12,000 pounds, depending on the ground. The, the, the track plays a lot into it. On a, on a class size sand track like in New York, our lightweight pair weighs 3,325, and we've pulled 10,500 distance. Wow, I imagine 10,000 pounds being pulled by two horses. That is impressive. So would you take a minute to explain what all this is here behind us? I'm gonna step back so you can get a good shot of this, and Dave could explain it. Well, this is a set of shoe and stocks. Uh, I'm, I'm not willing or able to stand and hold their feet up, so I use the stocks. I use a strap and I can pull their foot up and lay it here, and the back feet, I can pull those up and lay them there and strap them. And, and uh, chains are around them so they can't get out and get hurt, and there's chains under them so they can't fall down and get hurt. They're, they're designed for them to be safe and, and not be able to get.